Let's get back to the Benghazi story because there's some very big developments in this this morning. A witness or a suspect, uh, not sure which just yet, is in custody and is being questioned now, connected to that deadly terrorist attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi on September 11th. This comes after six months of investigation after these four Americans were brutally killed on that awful night, including our own U.S. ambassador, Chris Stevens. My next guest has been demanding answers on this and access to the survivors of the attack. That's one of the big issues right now. Why can't we speak to them and find out what they knew? Joined now uh, from CPAC by Utah Congress and Jason Chaffetz, he's a Republican, a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Good to have you here uh, once again, Congressman. Good morning to you. You know, it, it, it's interesting. We're just learning about this man who has been detained and is being questioned by the FBI. His name is believed to be Al Shibli or perhaps Chalabi. Uh, we, we know that he's from, let's pull up the map of this area because this is a hotbed of terrorism, the area that he's from. Uh, it's called Al Marj. It's near Derna uh, to the east of Libya. Uh, clearly, he's been involved with terrorist groups in the past, including possibly ACAP. What do you think about this, this uh, arrest, I guess we can call it, as we wait to find out whether he was just there and saw what happened or whether he was actually involved? Well, this is a very positive development. It has been more than six months. You know, I was very concerned at the beginning of this investigation because you had journalists going in there getting the Ambassador Stevens' diary before the FBI was even able to get in the ground weeks after, which makes the, the trail very cold. So hopefully, you know, I'm just reading news reports. It's a very positive development. But eastern Libya was where the revolution started. It's still a very volatile area. Uh, it appears, uh, based on news reports, he was very involved in these militias. Um, and hopefully this is a positive development because we need to bring some people to justice. Yeah. You've been on this a long time. Let, let, let's bring people back to that night. We have our report from Greg Palcott, which uh, came just in the, we, it came during the period you're talking about, actually, when the FBI wasn't on the ground yet, and journalists were able to get into the house and sort of get a look at what happened. Let's see some of that. A diplomatic security agent working in the Tactical Operations Center, immediately activated the imminent danger notification system. He also alerted the quick reaction security team stationed nearby, the Libyan 17th February Brigade, the Embassy in Tripoli, and the Diplomatic Security Command Center in Washington. Around 10 p.m., a surveillance drone begins to hover over the consulate and beams back live pictures to Washington. Back here in the main residence, the special agent, reportedly David Ubin, comes here and gets Ambassador Stevens from his bedroom and brings him, along with Sean Smith, to this room in the safe haven. Really, aside from some medicine and other supplies, a big, dark, windowless closet. And then, outside, a locked gate. Hope for security. Ubin radios others as to his whereabouts. The scene at the compound is erupting in gunfire and explosions. What a frightening sequence of events. You know, when you, when you go back to that night and you listen to it and you think about the fact that he asked for more security and was denied uh, that extra security. But there are people who know what happened. There were 33 people who were evacuated from there. Three of them uh, were diplomatic security that are injured. And we think that Secretary of State John Kerry may have spoken with one of them or perhaps Hillary Clinton visited at Walter Reed and spoke to one of them. But you want... Uh, to be able to question them as well, and you're considering a subpoena, right, Congressman? Well, the, the challenge here is you had people that were interviewed uh, immediately after the event there in Libya. We know that there were also interviews that were done in Germany. We have not been able to see those, that paperwork. We have seen nothing from the uh, Accountability Review Board, which is an internal review that was done. We have not been able to speak with the actual Accountability Review Board members. Uh, the State Department has not given us the names of those people that were attacked. Um, that were there that have first-hand knowledge of this information. They have given us zero documents, only allowed what's called an in-camera review, where we can look at documents as they look over our shoulder. They've given us eight tranches of those just in the last couple of why weeks. Why are they we got so, the eighth Congressman tranche. Chaffetz, I'm sorry to interrupt, but why are they so yeah. concerned? You know, that they claim that they had done, you know, that they have nothing to hide, and yet they're so concerned about, about letting you be part of that process and seeing how they, what's going on. Yeah. They are totally disregarding the history of the House of Representatives in the United States Congress. Uh, we have the pat we are co-equal branch of government. We should be given this information. I'm not going to let go of it. We've been so patient. You know, our leadership, uh, Chairman Issa, uh, Speaker Boehner, is so polite about this. But you know what? It becomes a point where you just left with no no other choices. Uh, it, we've got to get to the bottom of this, and I'm not going to let go of it. 
Are these people, the evacuees and the uh, people who are wounded, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them seriously so with a blow to the head, uh, according to the reports that I read, are, have they been told that they are not allowed to speak to anybody who wants to question them? Well, we're, we, we haven't been speaking with them. I, I don't know. I mean, I was told by, I do know of one person, and I did able to speak with his father. And his father said, yes, this person is uh, at the, at the uh, Bethesda Naval Hospital, uh, but you won't be able to find him because the State Department changed his name on all those records. And, and, and that's just, oh, what? Like, seriously, I, that's, that's just beyond what this country is all about. It makes no sense, and it sends up a lot of flashing red lights. It, it is totally it contrary to what the president has said. Totally contrary. All right, a lot of noise behind you, a lot of enthusiasm uh, at CPAC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Congressman Chaffetz, thank you very much. It's an important story. You've stayed on it, uh, and we will continue to as well. Thank you, sir.